You got it? Are you sure? Let's go over some questions to make sure you've understood the content in which we have today. Well, Jasmine states that, this is my friend guys, I have the same friends every time. Jasmine states that every relation is a function. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But every function is, but not every function is a relation. Well, hate to tell you, but Jasmine is wrong. Can you describe her error? Take some time, think about it, and then come back to me. Well, every function is a relation because in order for it to be a function, then that means that a set ordered pair, meaning that I have a relationship between the X and the Y, and it's also one-to-one, -one, that means that I have the domain, one domain, going to one range, and not one domain going to multiple ranges. If it goes to multiple ranges, then guess what? It is not a function, but that doesn't mean that it does not have a relation. But every function must be a relation. So here we go. Every function is a relation, yes, because any function can be written as a set of ordered pairs. Not every relation is a function because some relations could have domain values for which there is more than one range value. Meaning that, again, like I said, you may have, have multiple y's, but that does not mean it's a function. It can be a relation, but it won't be a function. The next one says, for the set of ordered pairs that you see here, identify the domain and the range. And then does this relation represent a function? We have one comma four, two comma five, three comma six, four comma seven, and one comma eight. On the other one, it says, each day Jake records the number of laps and the distance he walks in miles on a track. Graph the relation and determine, what, determine whether the distance that Jacob walks, which should be Jake, so Jake is walking, which is short for Jacob, is a function of the number of laps. We have three comma 0.75, 6 comma 1.5, 2 comma 2.25, 2 comma 0 0.5, 1 comma 1.75, 10 comma 2.5, and 4 comma 1. These are two separate problems. Take some time. One requires you to graph. Take some time, think about it, do what's asked, and then come back to me. All right, hopefully you've taken the time to write down your answers, shown your work, because mathematicians, in which we are, always show our work, and answer the questions. So for the first one, it says to, for the set of the order pairs, identify the domain and the range, and then also, does this relation represent a function or not? So if I think about, I have all ordered pairs. So I know that ordered pairs, again, are written as comma x and y make that a little bit bigger all right so i know how i can write out all my x's and i can write out all my y's so i know i have one and if i do it in a table x and y i have one two three four and one. Well, for my y's, I'm gonna change my color. Again, x and y. I have four, five, six, seven, and eight. Well, if we remember from today, 
That means that our domain has only one range, meaning for every, we have a one-to-one -one relationship. So for everything in our domain, we have one range and vice versa. We, so we can't have two X's going to a Y or a different Y. This is not one-to-one, -one, nor is this going to be a function. So this doesn't, it has, if it's a function, the answer is no, it's not. Moving on to the next one. Each day, Jacob records the number of laps and distance he walks in miles on a track. Graph the relation and determine whether the, the distance that Jacob slash Jake walks is a function of the number of laps. So for this one, we can look at it to see if it's going to be a function with the number of laps because of the ordered pairs that we have. And then we can also still graph it as well. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and look at my X's and my Y's. So this is an X and this is a Y. And I am going to do that for all of them. My X's are going to be three, six, nine. I'm gonna underline them so you can see it. Two, seven, 10, four. Six, let's see, nine, two, seven, ten, and four. My Y's are 0 0.75, 0 1.5, 2.25, 0 0.5, 0 1.75, 2.5, 2 and one. 0 0.75, 1.5, 2.25, 0 0.5, 1.75, and then also 1. I can also go ahead and graph this. I can also, using the Desmos calculator, I can put this in and see whether or not it's going to be a function or not. I can do what's called the vertical line test if I graph this to see if it will be, if it would pass the vertical line test to see if it was a function or not. But I can also look at these X and Y values to see if it's a function as well. And so for this, I have nothing that repeats, nothing for my X's and nothing for my Y's. That's one way that I can know that this, yes, it is a function. And that was simple and easy. So real world context, I've looked at X and Y values. Um, now it's time for us to see it in a different light. And what do I mean? Of course, you know, we have a test prep question. This one is coming from the Mississippi Department of Education. And it says, the table shows two sets of numbers, set A and set B. Which values of X will result in set B? a function of the tables in set A. Select function or not a function for each value of X. Take some time, think about what we've talked about today, answer it, and then come back to me. Well, if you said that Negative three would mean that it's not a function. You're correct. Negative two, meaning it would still be a function. One, it would still be a function. And then also three, it would still be a function. You are correct. If we would have put negative three in for set A where X is, it repeats. If we would have put in two in set A where you see X, it also repeats in set A, meaning that guess what? It's not a function. So now it's time for you to show me what you really know that you know. So do you really know what you know? This is a chance for you to work independently on the concepts and skills that we've talked about today. So if you need any help, if you need some more examples, 
you can always come back to us here at MPB. And for now, remember, I'm Miss G here at MPB, and I'll see you soon.